Afternoon. I'm uh, Ordnance Sergeant Lee LaVorn uh, with Fourth or Beach Troop Fourth U.S. Cavalry out of Fort Huachuca. This is Henry. He's my assistant for the day, and today we're going to be talking about how you would wear uh, the carbine, the 1873 carbine, which is the model we reviewed last time, with your horse. The carbine would be stored in a boot, which would be attached attached over your saddlebag on the staple of your saddle. It would then be run down over your saddlebag, and then it would be run through your safe straps here. The theory being that this is your tertiary weapon or your third level weapon. Your first would be your saber, your second would be your pistol or sidearm, and this would be utilized for either a long range engagement, a hit and run off of, off of, uh, of a target, off of a mounted position, or slung, dismounted and engaged with on foot for a holding action. It was very rare that light cavalry in the 1860s would dismount though. The whole notion of the cavalry was you were to be rapid engagement, scouting, and screening. So the whole notion of dismounting to fight is really something that was for the dragoons or light infantry. Now the way it's strung is you have, like I said, you have your strap coming down from the staple. You have two uh, buckles that would latch to your safe strap. Now there are a variety of ways that you can do this. You'll notice when you watch either reenactors or soldiers that perform this type of period uh, living history that some will have it like so. I don't like it there uh, simply because it's at that point it starts running behind your leg. It can get hooked inside your boot really easy. It can also start interfering with your cues if you need to move your leg back to either cue for a canter or to disengage your hindquarters or perform a very uh, a lot of different maneuvers. So what I do is I swing it low and almost in a horizontal position. It will not fall out because most of it's already jammed forward. And this way, just so you can see, I'll lower my stirrup. It's riding, I'm covering it so it doesn't get caught up in close order with one of my uh, battle buddy sabers. It also does not interfere with my leg motion because it's riding, once again, right in the back of my knee. Saber goes on the O-ring here, which already started to loosen up a little. And then there's there's two ways of carrying the saber on the horse, either almost straight up and down or at a, a slant. Okay. So I prefer to carry it up and down. Second strap goes here the o-ring of the the center fire rigging and that's pretty much it and then stirrup comes on top of it oh, cool and that does it get in the way for jumping or anything you have actually have your your leg underneath okay because i've seen you jump a lot and yeah. uh, being that way has been very effective hasn't hurt anything so and that's um that way if you have it up and down it doesn't really interfere with your cueing because you have your your leg still close to the horse whereas when you have the saber at the slant mm -hmm. your leg goes over and depending on what angle you wind up with yep. it, it, it's in your way okay Cool. So, actually, a old cavalry soldier told me that B troop in general has been doing it like that. Okay, awesome. But uh, I've I've changed you to that. It 
took a little bit of getting used to it, having sure. the saber in a different position. Yep. Because we've done it for so long. But I got used to it, and I now like it better this way. Fantastic. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.